You complete me. Hello, zombies. <laughs> oh my. This tutorial is coming from one of my most requested looks ever from a picture I posted on Instagram 35 weeks ago. It was inspired by the Saw movies and that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Let's get to it. First we need to make our puzzle piece of skin. So start by sitting at a table or a flat surface of some kind. I'm laying down a breakfast tray so that I can pick up my work and move it if I need to, but otherwise you can do this next step straight onto the table. Get your puzzle piece shape. You can draw one out like I did here or you can print one. It doesn't matter what shape it is, just make sure it's small enough or big enough to fit on whatever body part you'll be applying it to. Then I am taping that down onto the tray so that it won't slide around when we're working. If you don't have a tray or don't want to use one, this is the part that you can do straight onto the table. Then I am taking a clear, I think this is a cutting board of some type. Basically you want a thick but clear plastic that you can sit on top of your puzzle piece and sculpt on. Sorry it's messy, I've obviously used it quite a bit before this. You don't want to pour whatever FX material you'll be using onto the paper so that's why this step is necessary. I'm using a sulfur-free plastiline to sculpt, but for the most part you can use whatever clay you have and it should work okay. The kind of clay I'm using doesn't need to be wet, but it does need to be warm to be pliable, so I have a hair dryer nearby. Then the mold making is simple. Scrape off small pieces of clay and start laying it around the perimeter of your puzzle piece. For now, just try to get the general shape and we'll worry about the details next. Once the shape is down, you want to really carve out the edges so that they're clean and right above the outline of your puzzle piece. I'm using a sculpting tool for this that you can pick up at any craft store, but if you don't have that, you can probably use a toothpick or maybe even one end of a bobby pin. When the mold is done, it should look something like this. Now to make the actual prosthetic. So the FX material I'm choosing is this boiling hot gelatin. It shouldn't be bubbly, but I don't give a fluff, because we're going to paint over it anyway. I'm using gelatin because it's very realistic to real skin, and we want to be as creepy as possible, don't we? Silicone is also a great option, but it's more expensive and less easy to find. You can also use liquid latex to fill the mold, but it won't have the transparent, flappy creepiness of gelatin. But if you need to know how to make FX gelatin, click right here. Once you have your fluid FX material of choice, you just want to pour it right into the mold, filling it up so it's about a centimeter thick. Just judge it with your eyeballs. Make sure it's making contact with all sides of the corners of your mold, and if it's not, just use your sculpting tools or whatever it is to push it around a little bit. Now we wait. A gelatin prosthetic this tiny doesn't take very long to set. I gave it half an hour to be safe, but it probably set in less than 10. Silicone would be similar, and latex would probably take the longest. You can lightly poke it to test and see if it's solidified or not. When it's set, carefully pick up a corner, using a tool or your fingers, and then gently pull the whole thing out. Cover it in a foundation that matches your skin, and then go around the edges with scab blood or regular blood. I chose scab blood. No surprise there. Now to put the indent of that onto our face. The easiest way to transfer the same exact puzzle shape onto our face is to treat it like a stamp. I covered the back of my puzzle piece with a red cream paint because that will transfer the easiest, and then I'm going to put that painted side exactly where I want the indent to be. In this case, it's my forehead, forehead, mostly because that's where I put it 35 weeks ago, and I think the reason I put it there 35 weeks ago is because that part of the face has the best real estate with the least amount of movement, so it seemed like a good idea. Boom! Easy. Then we just need to build up the edge of the shape so it looks a little recessed. I'll be using silicone slash third degree to do that. You can use gelatin or cotton and latex to do this part, but I think silicone gives you the best effect. To use third degree, you need to mix equal parts from bottle A as from bottle B. When you mix the equal parts together, they will start to set, so do not ever mix these within their bottles or even use the same spatula between scooping out the product. I just pour both into a little cup to avoid that altogether. together. 
The consistency is pretty runny at first, but you'll want to move quickly because it sets in a few minutes. The best way I can describe this step is to treat it kind of like how we put our clay around the perimeter of the puzzle shape in the first part of this tutorial when we were making the prosthetic. Only this time, we're carving out the details on the inside of the shape as we go along rather than doing it at the end. I'm moving quickly trying to get around and close to every curve as best I can. When you're doing this, you want to taper your edges out the further away you get from the puzzle piece. I do this just by using my palette knife or finger to smooth down the outside edges. You can also use 99% alcohol to thin down the edges if you need a little extra help or if it starts to set too much. Because third degree is translucent, it's a little hard to see the depth around the outside of the puzzle piece now. So I'm going to color over that while adding a little bit of bruising and irritation as well. I'm using my Skin Illustrator Zombie Palette to do this. They're alcohol activated paints. And I like how they work on top of silicone the best, but you could also use water activated paints or cream paints for this. Also, please excuse my horribly red eyes in this tutorial. I'm currently recovering from an eyeball injury, well, two actually, so they are not happy right meow. I also might actually be mildly concussed from my injury, which would explain why I'm acting surprisingly subdued and normal for me. So sorry. Anyway. I didn't want to do a lot here, just enough to, like I said, bruise and irritate the skin around it a little bit. So I used very diluted browns, purples, and reds around the area. You'll notice I dab the area with my finger if I want to blend it out quickly, but I don't want to blend it out too much either because bruises and irritation in real life rarely perfectly blend into healthy skin, so it would look unnatural to try to evenly smoke it out like we were doing our everyday eyeshadow. Because we already have a bloody looking puzzle indent, thanks to stamping the shape on with a red cream paint, we don't really need to do much inside of the piece. I used a little bit of brown cream paint just to give some extra darkness and depth to the inner edges of the puzzle piece, and then topping it off with, you guessed it, scap blood. You can add regular blood dripping down off of this if you'd like, to make it extra messy and gory, but I thought this look was gory enough in its concept, so I chose to leave it more naked. But there you go, a perfect fit to your missing piece. This was inspired by Saul because Jigsaw piece and, you know, he would cut a Jigsaw piece from his victims, at least in the early movies while they were still good. Fun fact about me, I own all seven saws. And inside of the case of every single one of them, I have at least one movie ticket from opening night when I saw it. Sometimes, two. although they weren't both on opening night. If I have two, it's from at least a different day, maybe week. Yeah, don't judge me. I know that I went to film school and I'm supposed to have really good taste in films, but don't tell anyone how much I love those movies. It's not even true. I just like the one, right? I just like the one. One play game, Mikey. All your life been doing makeup and defending people on the internet. Will you throw out all of your makeup brushes to save yourself? The worst saw pitch ever. If I heard that, I'd be like, hell yeah, I would. Take them all! Game over. <laughs>